To the colony here. The Quebec. The Quebec, yeah. And then in fear of the colonists, he's going to force all the colonies not only give them to the French, but make them become what religion? Catholic. Catholic. It really played into that anti Catholic bias that existed in the United States for years. And so we did get the siege of Boston. How about the Tea Act? Okay, we got through the Tea Act. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't so much an argument against tea, it was angry at what? Monopoly. Yeah, the monopolies. And what did they dress up as? Um, because? Yeah, liberty. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed only one company made the Super Bowl? It means that one company or one entity controls a market. So only one entity. Yeah, in this sense, but and they gave the monopoly to these idiot companies, so they're the only company that sells. And and we got things that in Africa are like a monopoly. Northwestern is a monopoly. So it's one entity that owns. A mark controls a mark. So the East India Company was the only one that sold tea. Now that is a monopolies might be for something that people don't really want, but if it's something that people demand, it's huge. And monopolies can drive prices up, drive quality down, dramatically drive wages. That work. We'll get to that. That's a big deal down the road, obviously. Uh, so we got CJ Boss, we got left me mention lesson in Common Core. What did the um, what were the results that the first Continental Congress agreed to? Yes. Yeah, the boycott by the Continental Association, but that was all part of what result? Suffolk. Suffolk, yeah. The Suffolk resolves. Militia, Declaration of Rights and Grievances. Let's go. We got the siege of Boston. There's kind of a mobbish number of troops around there. And so I'm going to drive it. Well, we got to get to the next thing. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia. By the way, that's Independence Hall. It's a the territorial capital. Independence Hall is awesome. If you get a chance, go there. That's where they wrote the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. And it wasn't originally called Independence Hall, but I think you see why. And it was about five blocks from there that I saw a woman have her purse snatch. And that was my... I, I didn't see the whole thing. My wife and I walked down the street, and also we heard this scream and stop. We turned around, and this guy ran right by me. I think I told you that one, didn't I? Actually, well, it's one of those things, are you, really, is that what you want to do? Because how do you know why she's yelling stop? I didn't know why. Yeah. yeah but that's why I was, it was just like, then I look back and they're like, they stole my purse. And then these two guys ran, running after her, that two guys are with. And we saw them for the next half hour, running around downtown Philadelphia. <laughs> and they run, we see them run by, a few minutes early, run by. My favorite is when we saw all, or two guys, who were involved in the first, the actual first snatchers, and two chasing them, and they're both like this. <sighs> and they took off running again. It was great. Yeah. When I was in Philadelphia, like, a few years ago, one of the things that, like, I think it's like, that was like, Philadelphia is not a big city of brotherly love, so that doesn't obviously surprise me that happened. <laughs> the brotherly, not brotherly love, I like that. Yeah, it's a, I like big city. But yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. The best part when we were there, the temperature was uh, 101 degrees when that happened, and the humidity was 103. You know, go beyond the saturation point, and the low that night, 91. I 
That's a little unusual because I don't know if you know this, Montana tends to be dry. Moving on, back to Philadelphia. Sam, present up in this hall. This is actually, we're sitting behind waiting to go for beer and then go in. We're waiting, you have to get a tour, set a time up. And meanwhile in Philadelphia, by the way, on this, this week in 1971, the Chiefs are going to play the Dolphins. That's 1971. You think that won't be on the test? That the Chiefs are playing the Dolphins, or that's in Dolphins, I meant the Jets. Lynn Dawson. Chiefs won. The rest is. So, back to the second kind of Congress. I was looking for something else, and that popped up, and I thought, oh, I like Lynn Dawson. All right. Chiefs Jets. Is the second Congress in Philadelphia? Yes. In, that's the first one that would be in Independence Hall. The first one, Independence Hall, wasn't quite done yet. Okay. And so this would be in Philadelphia, yes. Okay. And so they met, and now you have Lexington and Concord. And one thing we should add, all those that were wavering, oh, all 13 state sent representatives, all those that were wavering, they didn't go. If you're kind of, I'm not sure I like this independence thing, and that's how you know there's war, yeah, I'm going to say New York. So Georgia did send delegates, but still, these are mostly patriots. And the first thing they did is create a continental army. Now, let's be clear about it. The, the Congress has no power. So they just said, the mob of militia are now the continental army. Okay. They have no money for uniforms or weapons. They are just now the army. But they would need a commander. <coughs> and Massachusetts wanted local pe people on the ground there. But George Washington, and here's a picture of Washington supposedly lobbying for it, but it's a picture of Washington in the 1790s. So it's that picture closer to one on the dollar, which is kind of funny. He did not look like that then. But they picked George Washington. Washington showed up in his full dress militia uniform, which just happened to be blue. And strutting around, kind of, when I make a good commander, look at me. I'm six foot two. He was six foot two. And that's, a, yeah, pretty tall. They were quite as short as people think, but they were still shorter. Not much protein. So, and he kind of lobbied for it. He had experience. But John Adams of Massachusetts said, we need him. We need Washington. And the reason why he knew this would never win unless they unify all the colonies, especially the richest and most populous colony at that time, Virginia, let's pick Washington. So Washington was done as a unifier. Adams knew, had no idea if Washington would be a good commander, didn't really know him. Just pick him. Or, or support him for the unification. A year later, Adams is going to want him fired. So this is just purely a political move. If anybody thinks that military things are outside the political realm, why are you going to be surprised? It's all politics. Then, so Washington wrote up the bill or wrote up the Boston. Why is going? This going to be a big battle. And then they set up a declaration of causes. Sometimes they're called this declaration of resolves, where they said, look at all the stuff Britain has done to us. And the big thing about that is those who were there said, we cannot allow British tyranny anymore. We resolve that we, be, we would rather die as free men than live as slaves. So basically, they're beginning, I mean, this is a big step. The vast majority still wanted some kind of resolution, but they're now saying we are being treated as slaves. And to many of them, they're slaveholders. They know. But they fear. But they sent a message of reconciliation directly to King George III. It's going to be dubbed the Aldi Branch Petition. That comes from what's in the Torah, the Old Testament, also I think the second book of the Quran, which all come from the same basic roots, but it comes from there. There's a reference to that, but it means peace. 
And it's basically saying, we will, we agree we can come back. We'll come back if you just let us alone. We don't need war. And so they're still blaming parliament and not blaming the king. The problem is it's hard to blame parliament. That's this body of 500 people. It's a lot easier to blame the tyrant. And they'll learn to arrest when you get to the Declaration of Independence. This is going to be the de facto government out of Independence Hall. So it's going to be a legislative body that has no real power. We're going to have to borrow money or just kind of print worthless paper money. Most people accept it. But this, this is the body that will declare independence and the body that will ratify the, the uh, Treaty of Paris of 1783. All in Independence Hall. And that is why Philadelphia, you know, rightfully is in many ways considered you know, the center of American independence. Once again, if you get a chance, go. You might get shoved, you might get mugged, but it's worth it. I actually really like Philadelphia. Everyone there is very nice. As long as they're not robbing you, stealing you, shoving you, or and what, when I was there the first time, it was in the murder cap. It was the murder capital of the United States. Moving on, yes. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage is maybe the greatest best scene in the world. Huh? Are you talking about what? National yeah, Treasure. I, 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 that's all. We're, we're gonna watch National Treasure. That'll be your. Uh, I've actually never seen it. It has Nicolas Cage in it. Moving on. So we're coming to Bunker Hill. So everybody write down June 17, 1777. So Washington is not really there yet. You know, it takes a long time for it to get out there. And everybody thought there'd be one big battle. The British thought, if we can win this one big battle, the colonists will quit. The colonists thought, we win one big battle, and the British will realize we need business, and they'll let us along. Every war, they always think, both sides, one big battle, we'll show how tough we are, we'll quit. How many times does it happen where one big battle is decided? Almost never. Through today. But everyone still thinks it. Any questions? So... I know we could draw Philadelphia or Boston. By the way, those are uh, British regulars charging up the hill. British soldiers, 20 year hitch. Their fierce discipline, they were brave. Bulldogs. Poor guys in many ways. I'm going to have to draw you a map. And so I have to shut off the camera. I know what a lot of you are thinking. I'm just trying to show off my cartography, cartography skills. You're right. I'm a natural born map maker. So I will draw you. In fact, I'm not going to draw you a map of Boston. I'm going to take you to Boston. Get ready for a trip. Are you ready? This is going to be very exciting. So let me draw you Boston. Do you have a brown pen? Don't you need a brown pen for land? I need brown. I'm missing pens. Black, black is not a Look at it. Look at it. All right, here we go. Are you ready for a little trip? Here's Boston Harbor. Okay. We're going to make it green because that is more realistic than seeing the name of the Harbor. Right in his room. <laughs> That's a mic drop, and I'm out of here. So I walked down the hall, and about this far into Mr. Larkin's room, we got pinned. <laughs> Just a sec, I'm gonna enjoy the moment. Okay. 
I've done that for a while. Make it in the room. I've thrown kids down the hall. So, here in Boston Harbor. Do you feel like you're there? Yeah. Look at this, baby. Here's water, right? The boats are going to be green, so here's the ship. Do you know that's a harbor? Here's a whale. Walrus. Walry. Okay, so there's hills all the way around. And the, the militias, the militia is pretty disorganized. They're in the hill, they're besieging Boston. Boston is right here in this tonsil. That's Boston. That looks vaguely like a tonsil. A freaky two tonsil person. So now Here's Charleston Peninsula, and then now it's all city, but back then there was, there was uh, kind of a stepping stone in the hills. And uh, there's one hill here, and then kind of a hill, and like this down to the water. On the first hill, this one of the thing will come flying, trying to. <laughs> I think Mr. Larson is like that. <laughs> All right, so this is Bunker Hill, and right below it is Breed's Hill. So what the colonists decided to do is the, the militia there, and Israel Putnam would lead them. They would send about nearly a thousand men to build a fort on Bunker Hill. The problem is when they went down to Bunker Hill and they're going there just that night of the 16th and the 17th. They realized Breed's Hill is right in front. You can't see anything. So they actually built the fort on Breed's Hill. But since the original orders were written for Bunker Hill, we call it Bunker Hill today. Even though the battle was fought on Breed's Hill and the monument for the battle is on Breed's Hill. So they built a fort. And the fort looks something like this, a square fort, just a square entrenchment, a little bit of a rhombus. So of that, and what they did is, as quickly as they could, they dug about a three-foot hole or trench and then piled the dirt in front. So they have a little mound, and so they have a little bit of protection. In fact, the idea was the mound will go right here, and so they called that a breastwork. Because what does militia do, especially if they face regular soldiers normally? They run, but if they're behind this, they might stay in front. So that's the plan. Now, they're using brown vest muskets. They can't hit anything with those, and they hardly practice. And that's why Putnam would make his famous order. If the British attack, don't fire, you know it? To the whites of their eyes. That's about 20 yards. But the thought is, we're going to hit something. Right? Well, when Gage saw them, he put 1,500 men on whale boats and rode them over. He was going to get this decisive victory right here they charged up this hill and the plan was the men would march in their straight lines march to about 40 30 to 40 yards fire one or two shots fix bayonets go they're going to overwhelm them they want to slaughter the militia send a message the one big battle that you can't win quit so that's gage's plan so when they got there and begin to march up the hill when they got to about 25 yards or so, they stopped and they just started to aim. And that's when Putnam gave the order. And it's meant, well, actually, I, I lost. The British fired, but all the colonists were hiding behind that mound. Putnam gave the order. They stood up and all fired in one volley. And they mowed the British down to the lines. Over 100 men went down like that, killed or wounded. And the British retreated. But General Gage ordered the next group. The same thing happened. He ordered the next group. The same thing happened. Gage just kept coming. Another group was going to come even bigger to overwhelm Putnam and the militia at one time, one time, once and for all. And that's what Putnam, when he called down the line, they realized virtually none of the men had ammunition. They had so little powder, they could only fire a few times and they're done. That's it. And so he have the few men fire a couple shots and then retreat in good order. The British took the fort and lost a third of their men. 
And then when three more victories like that, they have to lose the war. So they won, but at a horrible cost. So to the pay, to the militia point of view, we didn't win our big victory, but we stood and fought. Now, this is going to be misleading. The militia stood and fought because a big mound in front of them. What if they're out in the open? Yeah. <laughs> that will be found out very much. Washington will come to hate the militia. But the colonists are, we can fight. We can take them. So when Washington arrived, it's like, we can fight them. And the British are like, we need to But Gage now is isolated here in Boston. The walrus are now switched sides. The walrus are supporting the colonists. Yeah. Walrus have no law. Don't trust walrus. I know they look kind of cool with the big tops. No. So it's that. Wall rock. So it's that. So do you want to do, do you feel like you've been to Boston now? Yeah. The thing is, the British couldn't drive them out. But the colonists don't have any cannon or enough powder to drive them out. There's heights here called the Dorchester Heights. If they could put a fort here. They can stop any ships going in and out of Boston Harbor. But Washington, who's trying to train this mob and not and recruit a real army and getting really nowhere. In fact, he really went to about 1779. And even then, it was not much. The boost was. That's kind of turned off huh? I'm still living in my the glory of the pen. So, stalemate there. So, you can imagine what they're thinking in the Continental Congress when they're planning all this stuff. And Bunker Hill's happening. Ironically, yes. Oh. Ironically, yeah. Okay. Um, what, why did you choose Washington? Because he's from Virginia. They wanted to unify the call. They wanted Virginia to be in the fight. The thing is, they knew Washington had some experience. But that's it. So there's Charleston Harbor, Charlestown, Peninsula burning with Boston next week. Yeah. How many men does the British have? The British would have having about 1,200 men, they lose about a third of them. Third, killed or wounded. Killed, wounded, or missing is called a casualty. A lot of times you think casualty, and they'll use them as a shorthand, like on the news, let's say that's someone who died. It's actually someone who can no longer fight. Killed, wounded. Missing means they deserted or they were captured. And both happen a lot. Especially these kind of wars. So, here's Boston. There are no British soldiers any place else but Boston and they're under siege. It's kind of a stalemate. But up here is a fort called Ticonderoga. And at Ticonderoga, this old French fort, there are about 17 British soldiers and their families living there as kind of caretakers. And they have lots of cannon, though. And lots of gunpowder. And so this actually happened a month before Bunker Hill, but I'm telling you this now. So May 1775, Ticonderoga. And when the French built forts, they built forts. That's what it looks like today. And that's when the French fort they built back in the 1740s. Stone fort. And it's right next to Lake Champagne, Crown Point, right there. Beautiful area. And I don't know what else you're thinking, Ticonderoga. Isn't that a great word? Ticonderoga? Does anyone have a Ticonderoga pencil? Does anyone have a wooden pencil? Let's see, let's see. Ticonderoga. This is so exciting. Ticonderoga pencil. And know what else is? Someday, down the road, you might have children. And I know what you're thinking. What's a good name for a child? <laughs> I'll give you one. Ticonderoga. Would that be a... Is that a, a, That could be male, female, whatever. Ticonderoga. Give me a little Ticonderoga. Where's Ticonderoga? Where's your sister Ticonderoga? Well, with your mother Ticonderoga. <laughs> it's so much easier. And it's fun to say. And think how much fun they'd have in elementary school with that name. But Ticonderoga. 
Well, they, well, 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 we jumped the gun there. We're going to hear it. Benedict Arnold, Benedict Arnold was with the New Massachusetts militia. And he suggested there that they have cannon Ticonderoga. So they allowed him to take some men up to Ticonderoga. So march over land. There's no real roads. At the same time, Ethan Al Allen, and there's supposedly Ethan Allen right there, and that's Benedict Arnold there. Ethan Allen and what they called the Green Mountain Boys, they were from this place called Vermont. So it's contemplated becoming an independent country. I know it's kind of weird to them on Vermont as an independent country. On their own initiative, they marched to Ticonderoga and just both happened to meet there in May 1777, 1775. And they announced to the head commanders here at Ticonderoga, this is supposed to them knocking on the door because they just had their living cabins outside of it. Yeah. They just basically knocked on the door and said, you have to surrender your fort. The men in the fort had no idea about lessons in a Concord. They had no idea. But why are these people here? But since there's just a few of them, they surrendered it without a shot. And they gave Benedict Arnold these cannons. And Arnold, on his own initiative, organized the transport of cannon from Ticonderoga to Boston. Those cannon would be decisive. They called them the noble cannons, but, but and Henry Knox was the man who actually led the bringing that over. He would later on command Washington's artillery, become the first Secretary of War in Washington's presidency. And there were no real roads. They drug them overland. It was a miserable, nearly two and a half month trip. They had to go down the Hudson and then across the Boston. Terrible trip. But when they arrived, all of a sudden, Washington had cannon and gunpowder. And that would change anything. They built a fort on those heights by the harbor, and now the British are bottled in. Benedict Arnold's move would be decisive, and this would not be his first. He would become one of the most important heroes of the new United States, which is ironic. Because some of you probably know, when you hear the word Benedict Arnold, you don't think of hero of the U.S., you might think of what? He'd become the most infamous traitor, such a traitor that his name would become synonymous with treason. And he was a great hero first. We will get to what happened and why he did it. Remember I told you there's a few things worse, more corrosive than somebody who feels slighted, that they don't get the respect they deserve? So with that, so once they got, by the way, this is the, what Boston Harbor really looked like. Don't you think my map was better? Yes, yeah. yes. They put one of those square forts here. The British didn't want another Bunker Hill. And in March of 1776, they fully abandoned Boston. There are no British troops anywhere. Too many of the Patriots, we won! Here are the British leaving, supposedly. So, a great victory. Washington, they would definitely try to train this militia because he knows the British are probably coming back. So, the Devonshire, uh, actually, we heard Dorkshire, but I think it's pronounced it like Suffolk. And if you listen to somebody from Boston say it, which I can't do the accent, you have no idea what he's talking about. I've talked to a guy that you know, mentioned it to you. So, okay. So, remember that Ollie Branch petition? The king responded, or actually didn't respond. The king sent back a proclamation, this is ready for, for suppressing, suppressing the rebellion. He didn't respond to it. This was a non-response. And what he said was, everybody who's taken up arms or met in a conspiracy, like the Continental Congress, the conspiracy to commit treason. They're all traitors and we will be punished under English law. He didn't say British law or the United Kingdom. He said English, implying medieval law. What is the punishment for treason under medieval law? Oh, that would be too easy. So a law of drawn quarter part of it. So at first you take them, torture them a little bit, 
hang them nearly to death. Hang them down, hang them down, hang them down. Right? Get that point? So awful torture. Then put them on the rack. What's the rack? Good guess, those are the socks. So lap, imagine laying flat, lock your legs on one end, have a crank with your with your arms oh, attached like this, wow. and you slowly pull it to stretch them. Which, by the way, if you want to get taller, it's a really easy. Don't do that. And then I'll do it like fat. Slowly pop out the shoulder joints. Slowly pop out the vertebrae one by one. Slowly pop the hip joints out. The knee joints out. The ankle joints out. Oh, I forgot. The elbows usually go. Huh? Why do you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why were they so aggressive? We are done. Then we did some bowling. Oh. Well, he's got time. There's a few ways you can do that. I mean, you can pull it out like a rope. Or you can take off the intestine, nail it down, pull the body away, or attach it to a horse. And you can live a long time like that. How do they finally finish him off? You mentioned draw and quarter. There's a few ways to draw and quarter. Draw and quarter, you could you know tie them like this. And by the way, they've already been they're already dislocated shoulders, all that. Tuck, strap them out like this, and then four guys, four axes. That's table. Or like this, four ropes, four horses, moving these four different directions very slowly. Or one that was really popular in the Thirty Years' War. Four sapling trees, they would bend down and tie down like this, attach a limb to each tree, and then all cut the tree at once so the trees pop up. Then cut their head off, put it on a pike, put it in front of the city, and said, this is what happens to traitors. That's why they threatened to torture them. Now, just imagine if you're in Philadelphia and you read this. The British love Boston. We already won. You're threatening to disembowel me? And you guys left? The heck with it. He didn't really mean it. The king was bluffing. The king was just trying to scare him. But ironically, this scare would push many patriots. Okay, it would push some, the remaining people on the fence would go home. But everyone left? What the hell, right? We're already dead, man. Why not go all the way? This ironically, oh, I should, almost forgot. In Parliament, the Whigs, led by William Pitt, the former Prime Minister, begged him not to do this. We're killing the goose that laid the golden egg. Don't do this! Because they were ignored. The Tories were the majority, and they wanted them to obey. They wanted revenge. And so with that, we're jumping to, we're going to go right to, to come back to Thomas Paine. So that will lead to independence. By the way, did you like that whole story? There's a reason I told you that. Not only because it's fun to see some of your faces, because of a little bit of such a cruelty, but also... That's what the king is telling. This was all meant, see? We need business now. I'm gone. So, only patriots remain. By December 1775, most still wanted reconciliation. And what happened? King's Proclamation, Boston. Everyone got that? King's Proclamation of Boston. They fled there. We're already dead. And you know what? We still really want that land. Lamb, lamb. We want it. It's amazing how many of the founding fathers were land speculators. It's just kind of mind boggling. So they're doing it, they're going. Sorry. And then there's one more thing that's going to happen. And this is going to become kind of controversial today because a few people said this was the key reason. It's not the key reason, but it's certainly the last straw. So in 
So, the royal governor of Virginia, last thing I want to get, I want to get this really quick. Lord Dunmo, he was trying to disarm the militia like they were trying to do in Boston, but he had no troops. No troops. Couldn't disarm the militia. He was losing control. And so he decided to create his own militia out of free slaves. He would free slaves and then arm them as a militia and promise them their freedom if they fight to disarm the militia. Now, he was doing this to scare the plantation owners. But without a doubt, this was the last straw. It was not the cause of independence, but it was like many Southerners who were very reluctant. They liked the system. The British have gone too far. The many Southern plantations. You start saying, oh, what are the British going to do next? This is kind of a slippery slope with the issue of slavery. There's little evidence that the uh, founding fathers declared independence because of it. the British did this, but there's a lot of evidence that this was like that's it. No, that's right. On that happy note, keep your books up, you can find them. I will sign things down. It's a great review. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot something. There's no key in the book, but I made a PDF on the key. If you go to my web page and find the section of all the units, find AT test review, and the key is on there, the PDF copy of it. And that won't get out. Want to see the map one more time? Yeah, it's it's like five questions. Don't take literally. That's a really good. I'll take you a race. Were you impressed? No. Come on. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Were you gonna mention Arnold as a traitor? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting character. Classic example of being slighted. All of you, I'm kicking you out of class immediately. Okay. Drop the notes. We can't sit. Really? Okay. You guys don't say anything. I don't say anything. Drop off your stuff. Go up to the library. Pick up. I told you you're gonna come to give you that AP Tech review book. Yeah. Go quick. Drop the stuff up. Go to the library. Check it out. Come back. It's amazing. Yeah. Library. Library. Yeah. It's warm. Right. Riot. Yeah, library. Library, check out the review book. You can drop stuff off if you want, but check out the review book, come back. You have to come back. I know you people are.
I know, I know, I give too much. I give and I give and I give. How do I go to school? We actually don't have a phone bill, though. This is the first new book. I think America is maybe three years old. This? America? It looks like it's 20 years old already. America? At least the thing does. No, it's, it's, it's only a few years old. And Zen is old. Zen, some of the Zen are from the late 1990s. Huh? Yeah, it's the book. Okay. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where you it, it doesn't look like what I was saying. Do you have your book with you? Yeah. It looks like it's been used. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've been used. But, it, but if you look, here's yeah. the great thing. Let's go to people. Copyright. So this one. Okay, so it's computer level now. What am I going to do with you? Drink all that water right now. Uh, you get to be involved with the school. Do you have a Just pop in 850 and drop it off. Sound good? That's a really nice book. Thanks, I just got it. What did you say, Panic at the Disco? Sure does. That'll be our next book, Panic at the Disco. Sounds great. Yeah. Want to run me over? You just get new books like, um, every month. Every month we'll get a new book. So this is a review book. It's by far the best of all the review books I've seen. A bunch of places put an AP review book. And the big thing about most of them, they just have practice tests. And don't get me wrong, it's important to see practice tests because you know the way they write multiple choice questions for standardized tests. 
I would argue stop recording.